Cisco made an IP camera back in 2012 that cost over $1,200. Now in 2019, I'm curious to see how well that camera compares to anything modern that you can buy on the market. So let's check it out. This is the Cisco CIVS IPC4500E. Back here, we've got our Ethernet. This is a port for a USB drive. And you can see here, there's a tiny little screw. And there is a adapter that if you put a thumb drive in here, if you have one that fits it correctly, you can actually screw this back in so somebody can't remove it. Now, the neat thing that I was reading about this is that uh, Cisco actually encrypts the video, so even if somebody did confiscate the drive, if they do not have the software to decrypt it, then they can't view the video. We got our power LED and uh, audio video, and then also PTZ controls as well too. Came in the box, We've got the little Allen wrench here, and a uh, piece for PTZ, or providing other power, and then also a lens adapter for a different type of lens. And of course we've got the quick start guide or instructions, but who needs that? Now we've got this lens here that you can see is for a one third inch sensor uh, for a CCTV camera. And it is a 2.8 to 12 millimeter manual zoom lens and manual focus. Instructions, don't need those. Just take off this lens cap. one on the IP camera as well. And this is threaded, so it just screws right in. Now here is where the iris plugs in. And this actually is one of the neat features about this camera is that it will actually go ahead and open the close the iris to the lens as much as it's needed based upon the situation of the light at the moment in time. Real quick, before I go into detail on everything, go ahead and slap that like button real quick. Appreciate it, thanks. So here is the CIVS IPC 4500E Cisco IP camera. And you can take a look here and see the firmware version, which is back from 2012. And unfortunately, without a service contract from Cisco, you cannot get an update for this camera. So here, if I log in to the camera, you can take a look and see that you have to first enable the channel, um, but any of these settings that you might change inside of here using a modern browser actually won't save. So the default is 720p resolution. Uh, so what I ended up doing is actually creating a Windows XP virtual machine in Hyper-V. Now, this had some challenges because after loading the operating system, uh, I actually could not move the mouse. All I could use was the keyboard inside of the VM. So using keyboard shortcuts, I uh, went ahead and used uh, the Windows key plus pause break, and this brings up the system properties. And then I'm using tab and the arrow keys to be able to navigate through here and uh, go ahead and allow a remote desktop or RDP, uh, which I actually went ahead and enabled before this video, but wanted to show you how I got to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just accept those changes and then next connect using remote desktop protocol or RDP. But first we need to be able to get the IP address. So if you use Windows R to be able to pull up the run prompt, you can then type in CMD to get a command prompt, then use IP config, get the IP address, come over here and go ahead and plug in the IP address for the remote desktop protocol connection and you can see here that I set the resolution uh, to something smaller so that we could have everything on the screen and I log in with the administrator account and the password and now I can use the mouse and actually control stuff within the IP camera now the IP camera only officially supports Internet Explorer 6 but after doing this, I was able to actually set it over to the 1080 because the original resolution was only 720p. Now I kicked this down to 10 frames a second because it's not really needed to have like full motion. 
uh, you just need to get the image and you need to also consider uh, bandwidth and disk rights and stuff where it's going. The camera supports uh, audio as well and then I have the constant bitrate set to 2 megabits. Uh, I did try doing the fixed quality settings as well but it seems like I got a more consistent uh, picture uh, as well as uh, bandwidth utilization that was more predictable and constant just by selecting the two megabits per second. Now up here you have the session ID that I just copied so now if we come into Blue Iris and edit the connection to that camera then we need to actually put that into here and see video uh, here for the connection string You need to replace that session ID with the one that is from the camera from when you were logged into the web page. Now I do have a ticket open with Blue Iris on this and we're trying to see if there's any simpler way to be able to automate getting this from the camera. Uh, I've also been using uh, curl from uh, Bash on a Linux VM uh, to be able to try to uh, automate some of this to see if I could maybe script the way around it. Uh, but hopefully Blue Iris will end up implementing something so that this is no longer an issue. Now the top camera, you can barely hear the audio in, but that is the real link camera, and that's because of the distance. Now during the day, visibility of the plate is good on both cameras. Now you can definitely see more definition in the Dahua camera over the Cisco, but that's just because of the megapixel difference. Now at nighttime, this is where the Cisco camera is going to shine. As soon as the night vision kicks in on the Dahua, BAM! Now you can't read the plate. It's just completely blown out because it's overexposed. But with a Cisco camera, you can still read it. One of the reasons why you would want to put all that effort into getting something like this to work is because it's very expensive to purchase a real license plate reader or LPR. So by having an auto iris on an older last gen or several old gen camera, gives you the ability to purchase at a reasonable price something that you can create your own license plate reader camera with. Hey, real quick, if you like videos like this, please remember to go ahead and slap that like button on your screen and go ahead and click the subscribe button as well so you can see what I go ahead and release next. And go ahead and click that little bell icon so that you can see everything that gets released on this channel. Thank you, appreciate it, and hope to release more soon.